So I think at this point, we can all agree that the new M1 Max are an awesome piece of technology that's completely disrupted the personal computing industry and has blown the Intel and Microsoft equivalents out of the water. But as good as they are, the M1 Max still have their own issues and in this video, I'm going to discuss five of them. Starting off with number one, and that is the inability to output to two external displays at the same time. Now, the M1 Mac Mini can do this without issue, but the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro simply can't. You can use a Display Link adapter, but that requires buying an expensive hub, and it is nowhere near as good as simply plugging both displays in using a USB-C cable direct to the MacBook. For me personally, and I think a lot of other users, this isn't a big deal as we would only ever use one external display at a time, but for many, it's a deal breaker. Moving on to number two, and that is the read and write speeds of external drives plugged in via the USB-C ports on the M1 Max. Quite often, they just aren't as good as they were on the old Intel Mac versions. Here's a speed test using a Samsung T5 SSD. You can see it's faster on the 2017 Intel MacBook Pro versus the new M1 MacBook Pro. Now, after doing some research on this, the issue isn't 100% clear. It could be firmware issues on either the M1 Max or even the external drives themselves. So hopefully in the near future, this will be updated, but at this point, it's difficult to predict. The drives still work very well and are still quite fast, but some just won't reach their maximum speeds for whatever reason. On to number three, and this is perhaps the biggest issue for many people. The reality is many apps and programs either just won't be available on the new Apple Silicon for a while or won't be optimized. We can see this with programs such as Parallels or the Adobe Suite, which either straight up don't work or have to run off the Rosetta 2 emulation. For those of you not familiar, Rosetta 2 is essentially translating Intel-based programs to run on Apple Silicon. It has a performance hit of about 20%, but the M1 chip is just so powerful, many of these apps are still outperforming their native Intel counterparts. Luckily, many companies are rushing to support the M1 chip, like DaVinci, who recently released their 17.1 beta, fully supporting the M1. However, I expect that it will take the next 12 months or so to see a significant amount of support and optimization take place, so you might be inclined to hold off on purchasing an M1 device until this takes place. Moving on to number four, and that is Bluetooth issues. Many, many people have reported issues connecting and pairing devices via Bluetooth on their M1 Max. I experienced some of this myself when I tried to pair my Logitech MX Master mouse and Apple wireless keyboard with my M1 Mac mini. It took a long time to finally get them to pair and work properly, but it worked fine on my MacBook Air. Hopefully Apple will release software updates to fix it for good, but for now it can be quite annoying if you are affected by it. Lastly, number five, Apple certainly isn't stupid. They well and truly realize how powerful their M1 chips are and how far ahead of the competition Apple is as a whole. I expect they will be pumping billions of dollars into research and development to keep improving and releasing updated Apple Silicon Macs as quickly as they possibly can. But what does this mean for you? Well, there's a very, very strong possibility that Apple could release an M2 or similarly branded version of Mac this time next year, which will absolutely destroy the current lineup in terms of raw power and performance. Now, usually I recommend to simply just buy whatever meets your needs now, if you need to upgrade, and don't fall into the trap of waiting a few more months to see what's around the corner. As we saw with the previous Intel generations, over the last 10 years, we saw an average of about only a 10 to 15% improvement each year with the updated Mac models. Is this worth waiting 12 months for? Absolutely not. But the problem now is that right now, this is the very first edition of Apple Silicon. It's essentially a beta version. There is a very real possibility that this time next year, they will release an M2 version that could be two, three, or even four times more powerful than this one. And that is a significant change. 
Is it worth waiting for? Well, that decision is up to you. If you need to upgrade right now, you certainly won't be disappointed if you go with one of the current M1 Macs. Anyway, guys, that's it from me for this video. Hope you enjoyed those five points. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to get back to everyone. But apart from that, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.